right, welcome back to Room 237, back with another review, and it's another review of an A24 film. Uh, if you follow my channel recently, you know I've been kind of doing a marathon of A24 films, not just the horror films, because they are my favorite company for modern horror, but also going outside of that and checking out what they have to offer in other genres. And this is another non-horror film, but this is the kind of non-horror film that I just eat right up by A24. This is the kind of stuff that I like to watch outside of horror. And it's a, another film by the Safdie brothers. I've already reviewed one. I, I think it was their most recent one. I don't think they've come out with one since. But this is a movie I've wanted to see since, you know, I saw The Lighthouse, then I saw The Batman, <clears throat> and, you know, of course, then I saw... Uh, uh, High Life, which is another A24 film that I'm going to do at some point. I want to watch it again. But also, even more especially since I saw Uncut Gems, because it's uh, Safdie Brothers, it is 2017's Good Time. Now, this is a movie that's been on my radar for quite a while. I think since Pattinson was announced as the new Batman, I was like, well, what does he have? outside of Twilight because I was kind of all I knew about was Twilight and everyone was just talking about this and how awesome he was I never got around to seeing it but loved him in the lighthouse he's my favorite Batman most comic accurate Batman both in aesthetic and tone and portrayal uh really really liked him in high life even though it's a bit more of a subdued kind of performance and I couldn't wait to see him in this. And I've heard it's a similar story to Uncut Gems. You know, you follow this sort of amoral character that, I guess Uncut Gems was more of an obligation. This is just more trying to do the right thing, but in the worst way possible. And just a series of disastrous choices, and decisions, twists and turns. With the Safdie Brothers direction and precise editing and just a cinematic thrill ride. And I am so glad I finally checked this out. This was a wild movie. And Robert Pattinson is, he's got to be one of my favorite younger actors out there today. I mean, the guy, everything I've seen him in outside of Twilight has, I mean, the guy can act. This is probably my favorite performance by him, as great as he was as Batman or as great as he was in The Lighthouse. This is really where I thought Pattinson just soared uh, uh, as an actor. He really blew me away in this. I think I was more impressed with Uncut Gems because I know Pattinson can act. I've never been an Adam Sandler fan. And no, it's not an Adam Sandler movie. Adam Sandler movie. It's Safety Brothers just happens to star Adam Sandler. But, you know, Uncut Gems was just an extreme anxiety attack, panic attack of a fucking movie. So I was very enthusiastic about going into this one and very similar. I, I think this one has a bit more of an art house flair to it. It's a bit more, there's more going on uh, visually it's definitely more of a crime thriller than Uncut Gems, ooh, with heavy emphasis on thriller. Uh, but everything about this movie worked. All the acting, the score, which was actually done by... Uh, don't tell me on this. But anyway, yeah, so written and directed by Josh and Betty Safdie, which Betty Safdie plays Robert Pattinson's younger brother, Nick, who has some sort of mental handicap. And before I knew that was one of the Safdie brothers, I looked up who played him because I totally bought that he was handicapped. He played it so well, so convincingly. Not like embarrassingly bad TV movie tearjerker <laughs> playing a mentally handicapped person. I mean, he was authentic in that role. But we also got... Uh, Buddy Duress, uh, Barkad Abdi, who people might know as the, I'm the captain now, 
from uh, Captain Phillips, uh, uh, Jennifer Jason Lee, and I was surprised to find out I don't listen to rap, but I do like death rap, and the one that got me into it at first was a rapper named Necro. He appears in this. It was really cool to see him. He plays this guy named Caliph, who, of course, is a drug dealer. But, uh, Sean Price Williams did the cinematography, and I hope I pronounced this correctly, uh, Odeothrix Point Never, or One Othrix, uh, One O Trix Point Never, I hope I said that right, did the score, and the score was awesome. Uh, there's even a song with Iggy Pop uh, in the soundtrack. Made for $2 million, but, I mean, it It looks like a big cinematic, like, big budget movie. And that just goes to just the style of filming of the Safdie Brothers. It only grossed 3.2. It deserved more, but that's what happens with A24. Now, I mean, it, it was shot on 35mm, I think they said, so it does have that kind of grainy look to it it looks like they're going for like this classic adrenaline pumping kind of thriller it even had like the copyright mxv i i whatever crap down at the bottom but one thing the safties do that really it it helps the intensity the anxiety just the gravity of the situation it makes it more intimate is that they shoot a lot of close-ups i mean when it's just a scene of our main characters or main character, especially with something crazy is going on, it's always this extreme close-up. And that just adds to the anxiety, makes it more intimate. You really kind of feel whatever they're feeling at the same time because of it. While at the same time, when there's like an exterior shot, it's like this wide shot that really just captures the, the scope of where they are. And this taking place in Queens, one thing that they did was they really kind of showed the diverse landscape of Queens. And you could kind of look at it as like a man's trip through hell that happens to be in Queens. Because he goes through all these different places that seem like very different foreign lands because of how diverse Queens and probably all of New York is. I mean, his Jennifer Jason Lee, his girlfriend, is a rich white woman in a high rise. He has to go to like the district with all the Jewish owned uh, businesses with the Jewish bail bond guy. He ends up going through like the Queens version of Chinatown, uh, a Haitian neighborhood. So he's kind of all over the place, and it really does feel like kind of a man's trip through hell, just through all these different worlds. And I thought that was captured very well. Also, like with Uncut Gems, and to just add to the authenticity, you know, when he goes to the bail bond place, the guy he talks to is the Jewish bail bond owner. So, or when his brother's in jail, fight breaks out. That's in real I believe it was actually shot in Rikers Island. It takes place there, but it, it was an active prison with active inmates. And they took direction from them. They were like, hey, if someone's going to fuck with the TV and a fight's going to break out, this is how it would go down. So, you know, they really just captured the authenticity of everything. And I think there was a lot of improv in that as well, which is a very interesting dichotomy because... You have such precise, you know, like, it's it's so precise with uh, the editing, the lighting, and just the look and what they capture. But when it comes to, you know, maybe dialogue or reactions to things and, you know, getting authentic people to play these certain positions, it, it's very loose. And... Uh, I find that very interesting. And it's a great story. It, at the very center of it, it is a story about uh, brotherhood. You know, uh, Connie, 
uh, Robert Pattinson, short, short for Constantine, which I thought was cool. You know, get the idea he's taking care of his younger handicapped brother his whole life. And, you know, he pulls him out of this program for, you know, people with handicaps that can help him. Especially with anger management, we get something to happen in the family with the grandmother. And again, Betty Safdie as Nick, flawless. Uh, I was actually just as impressed with him as I was uh, Robert Pattinson. Um, you know, he and Nick is already in trouble. He needs some kind of bail. So they go to rob a bank, which and they rob it with these authentic black guy masks, which was kind of based on a story that they heard about this guy in Ohio with this mask made by, I think, SPF effects super realistic he robbed like 14 banks and the fbi told the mask company to stop just a little story to get to it before the comments do um robbed the bank and just from then on it is just a series of just crazy uh, potentially and mostly a, a disastrous choices up until the end of the film his brother's arrested, thrown in jail, and it's his quest to just get him out at all costs. Start with a bail bond. If that doesn't work, well, let's go do this. Oh shit, we gotta lay down here. Oh crap, now that's compromised. Now we gotta go do this. And it's just, very much is like Adam Sandler's Howard Ratner character in Uncut Gems where they might be maybe not necessarily bad ideas, ideas that do land you into more trouble, but they're very quick decisions. You know, he's very sharp on his feet. He's he's very witty with, you know, d troubles just around the corner. He He's very quick with what to do next. And, you know, he is very amoral. You know, he's... He's trying to do something good, which is help his handicapped brother. He's trying to do that by breaking him out of jail, which, or, at first, you know, post his bail, but that doesn't work. Let's try to break him out. And then just everything along the way leads him to just do bad things. And there were parts in this movie that literally I couldn't even watch. I couldn't believe it, that it was going there. It, like uncut gems there's all these twists and turns I don't think anybody will see coming but like, there were a couple instances where I literally was just like oh, this is just gonna get so bad why and this is the, the kind of adrenaline rush film that I like you know I I've never cared for action like you know maybe a, a beat em up movies like Van Damme or, you know, Seagal or you know, uh, any of those guys or explosions or, you know, fast cars. You know, I've never, action films never got my adrenaline pumping. Movies like this in Uncut Gems, films of the like, those, those are what gets my adrenaline anxiety and the suspense in this movie is outrageous. And really what makes it work is, like Uncut Gems, which when I did my review for that, I compared it to Taxi Driver, where it is this kind of character where he's pretty much in almost every frame of the film. He's literally carrying this entire movie. And Pattinson's flawless in this. I, I completely bought him. Uh, and just all these people he kind of has to team up with. In a weird way, it's almost kind of like... Like a, a gritty New York crime version of Wizard of Oz. I almost feel weird saying that. But, you know, like um, he meets up with this person. Okay, I need her help. She tags along. Oh, crap. I... I'm stuck with you now. I need your help. So eventually there's like a group of people that he has that's helping him with this great goal of 
getting his brother out of, out of jail. And it is just such... Everything about this movie works. And again, the way it's filmed, it has that grit in that grain. So the aesthetic film-wise is very nice. The, the lighting also helps give it that art house look because there's a lot of neon lights, especially a lot of reds that look really intense. But then just with the way they shoot it, where, you know, it's almost always in close-up. It's very, you know, it adds the anxiety, adds to the intensity. But there's also a lot of foot chases where there's these wide shots. And, you know, it kind of shaky cam, but it, it doesn't feel like it's being made by hacks. And it, it feels like it's calculated just enough. And, again, the score is... It absolutely works. I mean, it's it's a much darker Uncut Gems. I mean, it is a similar story, but it, some people have found some comedy in Good Time, and uh, I, I think with the way he and this other guy play, uh, I don't even remember the character's name, played by, what's his name? A uh, buddy duress, sort of the stuff they say back and forth. This kind of can be kind of comedic. Ray, okay, duh, yeah, that's his name. But not really anything else I can say without getting into spoilers. But yeah, this is definitely an adrenaline pumping, just a very engrossing story with a character that you know. Moral compass is very foggy. I mean, the the bigger picture for what he's doing, yes, is a good thing. You know, he's he's the older brother always looking after his younger brother. But the way he goes about it is a bit immoral. So it makes him a very amoral character. But we just can't help but root for him. We can't help but want to see him get out of this. Now... It's not as frustrating as Uncut Gems. Uncut Gems was kind of a guy doing it to himself. Uh, maybe with a lack of power because of his addiction to gambling. But Uncut Gems is more frustrating. This is more intense. You know, it, uh, I would say the anxiety level is kind of similar. But you know, where that one was frustrating, this one was just more nail-biting like... Hoping he gets out of it. And. Yeah. He, he does make some bad bad choices. But. You know. He does pull off a lot of them. So. I can't recommend this movie enough. I mean. This is just another. Profound reason as to why. A24 is my favorite film company. I mean. Whether it's horror. Uh, and. Outside of horror, this is the kind of film that I, I like to watch by them. So, absolutely recommend it. And if you're a fan of Pattinson anyway, this to me is the pinnacle of his acting. And I would say this and Lighthouse are my two favorite films of his of uh, his performances. So now I'm just going to get to spoilers. So I've talked about this for 20 minutes already, but, you know, just... The idea of the bank robbery, which of course gets freaked up because of the die pack. Uh, him and his brother are walking. Cop stops him. The brother gets spooked, runs, leads to a chase. He gets arrested. At first, is with the bail bond. You know, he tries to use the money for the bank robbery, but too much of it is died. He needs ten grand more, so he asks Jennifer Jason Lee. Who, we get the idea she might have some of her own issues. She's this much older woman. Uh, maybe some sort of anxiety or bipolar disorder. Not a good relationship with her mother. He asks for the 10 grand on her mother's card. But her mother cancels it. So he's got to go some other way. Which he tried. There's a fight that breaks out with his brother. Uh in jail, gets the piss beaten out of him. 
finds out he's at the hospital. He decides to break him out. And even just scenes where he has to talk to people, like the cops sitting outside his room, just coming up with stories and just trying to talk his way through things, not even trying to get away with anything yet, but just, you know, feeding people bullshit. He's very good at coming up with believable stories and selling it to these people, you know, as a character. He, But, of course, his face is all wrapped up. He's able to break him out. Uh, he watches where this one woman gets off the bus. And his brother's in a wheelchair, so he asks, hey, can we crash here for a bit? She leaves, but her 16-year-old granddaughter is there. They let him and his brother stay. But it, this was the part where at most it was literally having to go, Jesus Christ. Because he's just, this is where he dyes his hair blonde. Uh, I guess it to look different. He's just sitting there with the 16-year-old girl, Crystal, which she did a good job too. And then just as his mugshot comes on the screen, he, he leans over and kisses her and they start making out. He's probably in his late 20s. She's 16. But, you know, that's just one, one of those things where it's just like, I, I get what you're trying to do, trying to distract her, but she's 16. And it literally made me go, oh, God, this is not going to go well. Not only that, he then takes her upstairs, but then that's when he hears commotion going on. His brother woke up. Oh, it's not his brother. Some other guy that was being held there by police with his face wrapped up. So now we kind of have this ragtag group with the 16-year-old so they could use her car. This guy that just got out of jail tells this long story about how he got out of jail, got drunk, did acid with his friends, uh, went to this uh, uh, indoor uh, amusement park, game room, cop stormed it. He, he thinks he left some acid in a Sprite bottle. If they go back and get it, he could sell it, use the money to get his brother out. And it just leads to more issues where they got to beat up the security guard and take this, take his outfit, which he's played by the, I'm the captain now. They give him the acid so when he wakes up, the police think he's just a druggie. Go back to his place. Then they get Necro involved, who's the drug dealer. And it all just keeps piling up until eventually, you know, he is arrested. He's found. And his brother Nick ends up going through the same program that he was in in the very beginning of the film anyway. And yes, the title does cut. It is a jail term where, you know, if you get off early, it's called good time. But it's, it also ends with someone telling Nick, you know, he, he did the right thing, turning himself in, taking full responsibility for the robbery. You know, he's, he's going to have a good time. I couldn't quite hear it. I don't know if said he's going to have a good time or you'll have a good time. Trying to make him feel better. And it is this very kind of bittersweet ending because you know he's getting the help that he needs and we get the idea that he doesn't participate in a lot he doesn't really talk that much and he starts participating in this group game with the other patients and you know just that final shot of Pattinson in the back seat or his final shot in the back seat of the cop car just with that look of failure after everything he went through that night he still failed but Nick is still going through a program that will help him. So it, at its heart, at its core, it is a very deep, you know, powerful story about brotherhood and a, a brotherly love. How far w will you go in just this bond between these two brothers? Especially these two brothers that kind of live this life where they're kind of all they have. Or where all they have is each other. And you know, you can really see that in Pattinson's performance. You can really tell that you know, he is just driven. 
the entire time. I mean, even when he's posing as a, as a security guard, and cops are looking all over the place trying to find other people that might have broken in. He's calling the hospital to try to get word of his brother. So yeah, just everything about all the performances, the music, the overall aesthetic, especially the the, the uh, lighting, the intense um, editing and direction of the Safdie brothers. But the thing that carries it the most it is Robert Pattinson. And uh, I would be comfortable saying how the Safdie brothers, because I think I said this in my review for Uncut Gems, they're kind of like the modern-day Coen brothers. They do remind me of the Coen brothers. Yeah. Absolute great stories. Ones that kind of unfold because of one decision. Very, you know, excellent, very uh, multi-dimensional characters. And, you know, it, they can keep making films with this formula. You know, one person, just a series of bad choices, but with different backgrounds, both in, in setting and character. You know, it's still a very different film from uh, Uncut Gems, but with a similar overall story and tone, the, though I'd say this is a lot darker. They can just keep using this formula and up. I'll check out every film. I mean, these guys know how to make a movie. So, uh, yeah, that's my review for A24's uh, Good Time by the Safdie Brothers, my favorite performance by Robert Pattinson. Uh, I do have High Life with Robert Pattinson, another A24 film. I do want to I do want to watch it one more time, though, before I review it. Uh, I think he's in another one. I think it's A24 called uh, The Rover. Maybe I'll get to that. But, yeah, I have a couple more to get to, a few more I want to order. Uh, and then I'll do countdowns, collection videos, stuff like that. So stay tuned for those, and uh, thank you for watching.